So I'm sitting here. I'm just praying and talking to God, realizing that, you know, the the thing that's going to help solve a lot of the tensions and the divides that are among the body of Christ is actually going to be a deeper spirit of prayer. In fact, I only know really that that something can happen when people pray that will not happen by any manner of teaching. I mean, teaching is great. I love it. I'm a teacher uh, of the Word of God. But at the end of the day, the thing that's going to matter most is going to be if people can get into the spirit of prayer where they're spending a good amount of time daily with God. I'm not talking about once in a while or once a quarter when your church comes together for a prayer meeting. But when you can become so aware of God's presence that you want to rush home after the long day or at the end of your work day, school day, whatever you do, and you want to rush home and get down on your knees to pray. That is what will happen when your heart is pulling towards God. The Bible says, When thou saidest unto me, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. That is the kind of intentionality that we must have, where we are intentionally going after the presence of God. We must be like one that longs for water and has not had water for days. We have to be as one that has been on an extended fast and has not eaten for days, but is craving the bread of life, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. If we can pray with that kind of zeal, fervor, intensity, and intentionality, we will see a re awakening and a revival that will cross this land and around the world. If the saints of God would quit trying to major on the minors or focus on things that are unessential, then we can have a true revival that will shake the earth and cause destruction to the kingdom of darkness. We need to learn to live in a place of prayer. And when I say this, I'm coming from a place where I myself pray and I have to find that place or else I become like no one else. I just become like just waste, you know, and I'm not saying that anybody's waste if they don't pray, but you're not living up to any of your potential if you're not a true like person of prayer. These are the things that made the early church, the prayer, the worship, the intensity of the moment. And we have come to a place, especially in North America or just in America, really United States, where there is a beginnings of what you might call a religious type persecution. Now, it's not to the place yet of it is, where it is in some other countries. I understand that. But we're finding the same type of spirit take hold of a lot of people all around th this country. And it's a problem because, one, it's showing that there is a downfall of this country internally. In other words, systems and everything are shaking. Morality of this country is shaking. It's shifting. And then it shows that the church is kind of at bay, if you will, and has been pushed off to the side. We've not been walking in the power of the Spirit. And what we will find soon is that all of our programs are like dung. It is no good anymore because the programs that we have often, not everyone of course, but often it's just a man-made excuse for why we do not have a true Holy Ghost revival. We need to get to the place where the supernatural is so prominent and pronounced in the entirety of the world that no longer can people use that as an excuse not to believe, that there is no proof of it. The Bible talks about Daniel and it said he had a spirit of dissolving of doubts, that he had the ability to dissolve doubts. That's what it says in the King James. Just look up that phrase, dissolving of doubts in the book of Daniel. He had, a, he was known to have the spirit of God in him. And this was by outsiders, people that were not fears of God. And if we can have this kind of thing, God will demonstrate him and show himself strong. He really will. Sometimes we think that, oh, God's not going to do that. No, he will perform signs and wonders so that the gospel can spread. 
Paul talks about this uh, in Romans chapter 15. When you read 18 and 19 and 20, he talks about how he was able to win obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed through mighty signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God. And then he said, with this ability, I was able to win these Gentiles and bring them into obedience to God. This is the same thing that remains. We have to come to the place where we are not dependent on man-made programs. Because guess what? This world doesn't care about our programs. We have a lot of programs, but really the world does not care about them right now. No one cares about programs. Another lame, whack program from the church. They want to see this God we talk about. And yeah, you know, you're like, oh, I wish we didn't have to. Yeah, and blessed are they that have never seen but believed. Of course, but we have tools to be witnesses. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you shall be witnesses after the dunamis, the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive power, right? To be witnesses. And so this power is the what is are the tools of God. And that, that word dunamis is used for the miraculous. I have another teaching on that. Check that video out too. But it's the power of God. It refers to signs and wonders and the supernatural and the miraculous. It's not just, oh, power like, oh, I feel energized. No, not that. We're talking about the living God who created the worlds and he spoke and he said, let there be and there was. And you think that he's limited to do whatever he wants. He's sovereign. If we learn to respect God and understand that he has so given us an ability to go and do the stuff, if you will, to walk as Jesus walked. You know, the Bible says we all, if we believe in the Lord, we also ought to walk as he walked. How did he walk? He walked in power. He cast out demons. He ministered to those who were disenfranchised from society. And he confronted religious falsehood. Now, half of my ministry, I feel, is about that, confronting false doctrine, because I have a heart for the people and the people of God and people that are seekers, because they need to find the truth. And there's so many lies. And guess what? Who is the father of lies, according to Scripture? Satan. He's the father of lies. So I'm out for now. Stay tuned for some real awesome uh, words coming out. Lots to talk about. God bless you in Jesus' name.